I'm Anil Kumar. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for taking keen interest in watching my videos and posting excellent questions. Now, based on your suggestions, here is another video where we will try to see how to calculate percentages without calculator. So the key idea here is to do fast calculations without calculator. So I've taken four examples. We'll work on this. And then I will also show you alternate way of doing it. So this basically will be extended uh, to about 15 minutes. So let's begin. We need to solve without calculator and find price, sales price after discount. That's the whole idea. So I have four values given. Original cost is given to you in, let's say, dollars, right? 112 and 84 and 68 dollars. Then we have percentage discount. So discount in percent is 13 percent on 100 dollars, 20 percent for 12, 25 on 84, 15 percent on 68. So we'll first find what is the discount amount and then we'll take away discount amount to get the sale price. Correct? So you know, sale price could be written as original price minus discount. Now in this column, when we talk about discount, we'll use percentages. So when I say 13%, it means 13 out of 100. Correct? So discount of 13% on 100 is clear and straightforward. So it is 100 times 13 over 100, right? That is what we're trying to say. And in fractions, you can simplify them by dividing numerator by denominator. What you get is the discount amount of 13. So therefore, what you pay is 100 minus 13, which is 87. So first you can take away 10, you get 90, and 90 take away 3 is 87. Do you understand? 13, how do you do it fast? Next one here is 12, 20%. 20% on 12 really means you could do like this. 12 times 0 0.2, 0. Do you understand? 0 decimal 2, 0. Since 20%, we could now see 20 over 100 means 20%. So when you divide, that goes. And dividing by 10 actually is just moving decimal and making the number smaller. So you get 0 0.2. Right. So the next step here, so it's a different way I'm trying to show you. You now multiply by 2, so you get 24. We just doubled 12. 12 times 2 is 24. We need one number after decimal, so we get 2.4. Does it make sense to you? So we will do 12 minus 2.4, right? So take away 1 from here, you are left with 11. And 11 take away 2 is 9. And that 10 take away 4 is 6, right? So we get 9.6. You could do either way, but we are splitting 12 into 11 and 1. From 1, we took away 0.5 to get 6. And from 11, we took away 2 to get 9, right? It's kind of borrow. 84 into 25%. This time, I am treating 25% as a quarter. So this is very important. 25% is being treated as 1 out of 4. Now, 20% could also be treated as 1 out of 5. So, converting them into fractions at times really help. So, this time, I'm going to use a different strategy. That is to say, when convenient, use fractions. 25% is 1 fourth, a quarter of it, right? So, so we are doing 84 times one fourth, right? So, how we could do it? We could do half and then again half and half. Do you see? Half and half is one fourth. So, half and half gives you 42, and then half of 42 is 21. So, we when we divide, we should get 21. So, I took this time to explain you 
how you could find 25% of any amount, right? So for 84, we get 21, half of half. Take away 21 from 84. So we get 63 as the sale price after discount. I hope that makes sense, right? Now, let's talk about 15%. What could you do with 15%? So on 68, you could apply 10% and 5% to give you 15%. Does make sense to you? 10% basically is moving a decimal, right? It is like 68 times 0 0.1. So that is moving a decimal and you get 6.8. Correct? Now, when we do 68 times 5%, it is 0 0.1 not just 5, 0, 5. But this is half of 6.8. So you could work from here. So what we'll do here is that we will do, because 5% and 10%, it has to be half of 6.8. Half of 6.8 is 3.4, correct? 15% means you have to add them both. So 8 plus 4 is 12, you get one here, and that gives you 10.2. So taking away 10.2, you get your answer. So in this particular case, we get what? We get 68, take away 10.2. Perfect. Now, decimals. So I'll, let me just show you borrowing. Here we have zero. When we borrow, what really happens? It becomes seven, that becomes 10. And what you get here is eight, seven, and five. So we have 57.8 as our answer. Now prices are normally given in two decimal places. So we'll insert this 0, 0, two decimal places everywhere, right? Here it is not required, uh, but well, anyway, whenever there is a decimal in these places, the price could be written to two decimal places. So I hope you got some strategy here. So remember that one, taking out percent is making a hundred. So from hundred, if you take out percent, it's kind of very simple calculation as you can see. 13% or whatever is the same value. But if these amounts are not hundred, then what you could do is you could multiply with their decimal equivalent or their fraction equivalent, right? So remember, we could convert percent to decimals or two fractions, whatever is convenient at a particular time. Perfect. Now, we'll show you alternate way of doing it. So let's do alternate method to understand how to do it. And that is to find what we pay. Now here I have four more examples. We have to solve without calculator, a similar question. We are given some original cost, percentage of discount, and we, not, we need to find what do you pay, right? That is what we are interested in. So at times what we can do here is, if the cost is 123 and discount is 70%, what you pay, this is very important question here, we are really interested in what do we pay. So we have a discount of 70%, we do not pay 70%, but we pay 30%. Do you understand? So all that makes the whole cost. 70 is discounted and 30 is what you pay, right? So this is huge. Now on 35, discount of 40%, you pay 60%. So we're talking about what we are paying. Here, 75% is the discount, so you pay 25%. And when 85% is the discount, you only pay 15%. Do you get my point? Paying 15% means what amount you pay, you can just convert directly from percent to this, right? So, so what we could do here, we could times 123 by 30%. That is to say 123 times 0 0.3 to get the amount. 0.3 means one decimal place. So one number has to come after decimal. 3 times 3 is 9. So place that 9 there. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. So we know 
36.90 since we are talking about amounts and all amounts we are taking as dollars right so so that is how we are working i hope this step is absolutely clear correct now for 35 something which will cost 35 dollars on 40 percent off you are paying 60 percent so what you do here is again 35 times 0 0.6 so when you multiply by one decimal place, you know, put a decimal, you have to write a number here first. 6 times 5 is 30, 0, 3 there. So 6 times 3 is 18 and 3 is 21. So you get 21.0, put another 0 since it is dollars and cents. Now 25%, the best way to deal with 25, I have again taken the value 84, but this could be changed to any number right so it could be for example we could take 136 or for 85 let's take a value which is let's say uh, 140 okay now if we have original cost as 136 we have to pay only 25 percent of that that means half of half treating 25 as one fourth is always a good idea correct so what you should do in this case is we have 136 you could divide this by 4 instead of multiplying we could also divide when you convert that to fractions now 4 times 3 is 12 you will get 16 and 34 so you pay 34 dollars right okay you need not put these decimals when not required but i'm just putting them to just give it a complete look in dollars and cents now 140 85 percent is a discount 15 percent is what you need to pay whenever you have 15 percent always split this to 10 percent and 5 percent it's always a good idea to take use of 10 and 5 kind of like this right so so we have now to pay of 140 dollars 10 and 15 percent 10 means 14 5 percent is half of 14 which is just 7 and when you add them up what you get is 14 plus 7 is equal to 21 so what we get here is that you just pay 21 dollars for a item which is on sale of 85 percent do you see that so that is how we could actually calculate our answers very fast. I hope that makes sense. Do some practice with different numbers, right? And then form your own strategies. Remember that you could directly find what you pay. You do not have to subtract the, the amounts. It is easier to subtract percentages at times. So that's the key idea, right? So you can actually calculate direct. calculate what you pay directly that will save time i hope these strategies help you to solve similar questions feel free to write your comments and share your views if you really like and subscribe to my videos that will be great thanks for watching and all the best